The department is being paralyzed by press demands for information on this case. I have friends in Washington who are just as anxious to find DePaul as you are. Why is Washington interested in this guy? I think he never got what he wanted from her. And I think he killed her. Either stick to the contract or be terminated. Murder is my business. In part one of Naked Justice. Wonder. I can do it without you want. Oh. Yes, sir. Nice weekend. Me too. See you Monday? Mm hmm Here is a special news release. Famed film star Shannon Richards has been found dead in Elysian Park. Shannon Richards. The remainder of the money is due now. Wire to my account in London. So what's the call? Murder. Forced overdose. Well, uh, Philip DePaul rented a Jaguar at the airport the night that Shannon Richards was murdered. We later found that car parked illegally on Oakmont Place in Beverly Hills. So from illegal parking to murder, that's a giant step. It's just a matter of time before the cops show up with a lot of questions. Yes, that's very true. Is that your blue Jaguar downstairs? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. Well, if I got to pick one, I'd say it's, uh... That guy right there, uh, second from the end. No one comes to my house and threatens me, especially a cheap dime store. What is it? There are two police officers outside. They want to talk to you. Mr. Rondino, did you have any insurance on Shannon Richards? George, give her the figures. Mm. $15 million for the time of the shoot. Really. It's fairly standard. Do you know if Miss Richards had any family? Yes, she did. Oh, what are you doing here? I own this house. Or at least I will when my sister's will is probated. I need a secure line. You've had an inquiry on 3704? Yes. What was the nature of the inquiry? Information on Philip DePaul. Inquirer's name, if known? Sergeant Dee Dee McCall, Los Angeles Police. Through SI agent Bradley Wilkes, same city. Thank you for calling, Desert Flower. Viking will be in touch. And now, Naked Justice, part two. Six, Sewer King is in place. Roger, Sewer King. Primary is a block north, still southbound. Sewer King, this is TV man. We'll take the phone as soon as Humpty Dumpty's on the wall. Roger, TV man. Sewer 
King, this is Air 6. We're pulling off. Go ahead, Air 6. Sewer King's got an eyeball on him. You know, all that guy has done is drive to and from the studio for the last two days. Can't be on the level. Ron Dino's just laying low till the dust settles, that's all. Okay, TV man, Humpty Dumpty's on the wall. Now, Roger, good buddy, put the pedal to the metal and aimed it at the barn. TV man and Captain America are on the scene. I think Parker's been watching too many Saturday morning cartoons. Sewer King, this is home base. Go ahead, home base. I got a message for you from Miss Meg Siebert. She'd like to meet you sometime this evening. She left a number. Thanks, Ambrose. Call her back, get a uh, place and time to meet her, and I'll get there as soon as I can. I bet you will. I was Tony Rondino's secretary in the daytime and his war at night. Then, uh, he tells me, forget it. How long ago was that? Seven weeks. Seven weeks ago, and you're still working for the guy? Jobs aren't a dime a dozen. And I, I decided I'd just wait her out. Excuse me. Waitress, could I have a double vodka on the rocks, please? Yeah, wait who out? Shannon Richards, the minute she came on the scene, he started acting like a 16-year-old. He did everything but get acne. I think she never gave him what he wanted, and I think he killed her. And why do you think that? Five days before she was murdered, Shannon came into the office for a, a meeting with uh, Tony and George Franklin. It was about 7 o'clock. She'd just been a shooting. Hadn't even taken her makeup off yet. They went at it hot and heavy, Tony and Shannon, yelling at the top of their lungs. I, I couldn't tell what the argument was about. The walls to his office are really thick, but it went on for about an hour. Then Shannon stormed out and sailed past me without a word. Well, didn't you guess, Ron, do you know what the argument was about? No. Tony and George stayed in the office for about another hour. A couple of times, Tony yelled at George. Then they left together and told me I could go home. When Tony came in the next morning, I said to him, <laughs> Honeymoon's over, huh? He looked at me like he could kill me on the spot. And he said, if you ever open your mouth to anybody about last night's meeting, you're dead meat. You got that? Four days later, Shannon Richards is dead. And you think Tony killed Shannon? I know he did. He got drunk one night and told me how he once beat a man to death when he worked for one of the casinos in Vegas. Wait a minute here, Meg. Why would Tony want Shannon dead? Doesn't he stand to lose a lot of money? What's the matter with you guys? You're always willing to jump on the theory of the woman scorned. Well, what about the man scorned? Tony probably never had a problem with a woman in his whole life till he met Shannon Richards. Do you know what he said to me? He told me I was history. The flame is out. Can you believe that? I gave him six of the best years I'll probably ever give anybody. And he tells me, the flame is out. Is there anybody else that you can think of that can corroborate the fact that Tony was in love with Shannon Richards? I mean, this is all very new to me. Why don't you try talking with the other poor slob who couldn't make it with Shannon? Well, who's that? Walter Ortiz. <laughs> you promiscuous slut! Oh, come on. Who is it this time? Who is it this time? Tell me who it is!
that's it. Last time I saw her, the last few feet of film I shot of her. I'll never be seen. Meg Siebert says you were in love with Shannon. <laughs> I fall in love with all my leading ladies. Makes the job easier, a lot more fun and easier. Who killed her? How the hell would I know? I understand Tony Rondina was in love with Shannon as well. Make Siebert again, right? Rondino. Maybe he had the hots for Shannon. What the hell did she want with him? I'll tell you something. And this is on the best possible authority, Shannon Richards herself. Absolutely nothing happened between them. Nothing. And what about you? That's none of your damn business. Let me explain something to you. Murder is my business. Now you want me to read you your rights? Okay. Okay. I was in love with her. I didn't kill her. Did you have a piece of this film? Yes, so. So what? You want to know what was in it for me? Is that what this is? Yeah. Is that what this is? Yeah. Okay. Three percent. 3% up to break even, 6% after that. And I'm talking gross, not profit. Was this going to be a successful film? Yeah, it was going to be. 50 million, 100 million. <laughs> the day Rondino signed Shannon, the picture was a guaranteed success. And what would prevent that? Her death. Hello? Hey, babe, it's me. I got some bad news. I won't be seeing you tonight. Why not? I just found out the cops are digging through every square inch of my life. What are they doing that for? They haven't found your sister's killer yet, and they're looking for somebody convenient to hang a murder rap on. But you haven't done anything. I know, but uh, the cops are getting desperate. Listen, until this thing blows over, I think we should play it cool. How long will that be? I don't know. I don't know. Let's play it one day at a time. Jesse? I miss seeing you. You think I don't feel the same way? I just don't want people to get the wrong idea about us, that's all. All right, Jesse. Whatever you think is best. Don't worry. Everything's gonna be fine. Trust me. I love you. I'll see you soon. I love you, too. Together, you would have picked a place that had a little bit more panache. Well, Dee Dee, my dad once told me, Brad, don't put your money in a bank that doesn't pay interest. Our special is meatloaf. You want to see a menu? Uh, two coffees. That's it? That's it. It ain't going to get better later, honey. Dump them. <laughs> well, you heard the lady, Brad. What? What does that mean? You don't want to see the pictures of DePaul? Do you have them? Is the special meatloaf? Well, so give. That sounds like something I should be saying. Bradley, if you don't give me those pictures, I'm going to tell the waitress that you want more than just her meatloaf. Oh, uh, <clears throat> great. I give these to you with the condition that if you find a call, you call me immediately. Well, come on, Brad. I can't promise that. No, it's a two-way street, Dee Dee. I have friends in Washington who are as anxious to find a call as you are. Now, if they find him first, they'll call you. Why is Washington interested in this guy? Uh, that's not part of this deal. This is part of this deal. You find DePaul, you call me. I've got to have your word on that. All right, I don't like the terms, but you have a deal. Yes. Tell them I'll have a statement for them in one hour. And hold all my calls. The department is being paralyzed by press demands for information on this case. Now, I want to know what we've got. I want it brief and simple. We've got Harry Caulfield, who apparently saw the killer. 
And we've got photographs of this Philip DePaul who may be that killer. Well, did anyone show these pictures to the witness? We're having a little trouble finding him. We got a high priority look on this thing, but he's a vagrant, so he's got no known address, no associates. We'll find him. Who is this guy, this DePaul? He's a Bulgarian, AKA Stefan Avak. He's defected and he's currently living in London, but no one has seen him there for at least a week. And we think he's probably a professional killer. His current whereabouts are unknown, but he was definitely in Los Angeles the night that Shannon Richards was killed. And you connected this guy with Tony Rondino, the producer? Only circumstantially, Chief. No one's actually seen him together. The only one that would benefit by Shannon's death is her sister, Diana Cross. Now, she's presently hooked up with a private detective by the name of Jesse Cruz. Is this Cruz a suspect? In my opinion, yes, sir. Well, if you think he's a suspect, what are you doing about it? Well, we presently have him under surveillance. R and I is doing a complete and thorough check on his background. How much does this sister, Diana Cross, how big is the estate? They're saying 10 million, but it's a hell of a lot more than that. And we've got a suspect, right? With the best possible motive there is, greed. And this Cruz might be involved with her, right? Yes. But we cannot overlook the Hollywood angle, Chief, which tends to lead us away from the sister. Now, this Shannon Richards, her personal manager, Monty Golden, was also murdered. Five days before Shannon's death, she had an hour-long shouting match with both of her producers. We have both of them under surveillance. So something was going on there. Come on, we're not sitting around on our butts on this thing. I know, Charlie. You're doing the best you can. Unfortunately, that's not something we can put on the 6 o'clock news. Get back to work. I'll try to come up with something to keep him off our backs for another 12 hours. Yeah, you know, if we took a number of southbound BMWs or Mercedes and divided them by the number of northbound Bentleys, we'd... Hey, check it out. Zebra 32 to L90. L90 here. Go ahead, 32. L90. Advise Hunter the man he's looking for just showed up. Roger, 32, stand by. Hunter, it's for you. Parker, he's got something for you. Talk to me, Parker. Philip DePaul just drove up. Now, he's left his car on the street and he's headed toward the back of the house. If he tries to move before I get there, nail him. I'm on my way. Thank you. Damn. 
gotta let him move. Light up ahead, we'll take him there. Out of the car, please. What have you got? A woman in apartment 212 says she saw her Toyota being driven away, and when we got here, we found this vehicle abandoned. All right, put an APB out on the Toyota. The driver's wanted on a 187. And hold this car for Prince. All right, will. I do nurse to pediatric ward. I do nurse to pediatric ward. This is a tough time for you, Parker, but I need your help. At the guy you saw. Yeah. Yeah, it's in my past. Pardon me, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Your friend died in surgery. Send him in. This uh, just came in. You want to see it? The Paul's killed a police officer. 
OAPD just put out a nationwide APB on them. They're pulling out all the stops on this one. Yeah, get me a secure line to Washington. Yo, Hunter, McCall. Got something for you here. Air 6 spotted an abandoned car near the Robertson on-ramp to the Santa Monica Freeway. Patrol checked it out. Stolen Toyota. Who about DePaul? A man matching DePaul's description rented a late 70s model dark blue Cadillac from Dash Rent-A-Car. That was eight blocks from where the Toyota was found. He used a national credit card under the name of Miro Ganchoff. And he had an accent. Here, uh, here's the credit card number. Oh, where's Parker? Well, he's gone. What do you mean he's gone? He walked into Charlie's office and turned his badge in. I guess Flood's death hurt him pretty bad. I'll have National put a 310 priority on him. Where are you going? Planning a trip, Parker? Going home. A little early to make that decision, isn't it? Well, I'm not making a decision now. I made it when that doctor walked out of the emergency room and told me my partner was dead. You're not gonna be happy if you walk away. Well, being here sure as hell hasn't made me happy. I've been waiting on it. Sense of accomplishment. A, a thank you from some citizen you just laid your butt on the line for. Justice in court. I've been waiting on it almost eight years now. The only good thing about this job died today. Damn. I, I just, I just can't cut it. It just isn't here. I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be the best damn cop in the city, but it just isn't here. You think you got the market cornered on that feeling, Parker? You don't think I've had my belly full at times? I'm not gonna let DePaul get away with what he did. Yeah. Well, are you the cop that was whittling when he was killed? No, I wasn't, Parker. That was you. I wonder if Flood would have quit had you been killed. I wonder if he'd have walked away and quit. You know, I think Flood was a pretty damn good cop. Maybe on his way to becoming a great cop. I feel that way about you, Parker. Exactly that way about you. I need you to help me get to Paul. Like just till we're back to Paul. Just till we're back to Paul. Lincoln 56, I have Sergeant McCall on the line for you. Lincoln 56, go. National came through. Three hours and 40 minutes after Miro Ganshev rented that Cadillac at uh, 140 to be exact. Let's check into Estero Beach Resort in Ensenada, Mexico. Good work, McCall. I'll see you in a couple days. Don't go down there. Let the Federales pick him up. I can't trust them to do the job, McCall. What about Harry Caulfield? No, nothing. OK, I think we better go ahead and pick up George Franklin. I'd like to have him in custody by the time I get back from Ensenada. What would you suggest I tell the captain? Not a thing. I'll see you in a couple of days. Lincoln 5 6 out. Hunter, you want me to go with you? Nope. I want you to get suited up. Go down and give McCall a hand. She'll need all the help she can get. How are you, my friend? Good, senor. Do you speak English? Yes, senor. Has an American by the name of Miro Ganchoff checked in here today? 
Si, si. I took Senor Gonchov to room 106, but he's not there now. I saw him leave. Okay, are you familiar with our President Jackson? Si, el Presidente Jackson? Si. He'd like to know where Meryl Gonchov can be found. I find out, Senor. Drop the gun, DePaul. Impressive credentials, Senor Anderson. A very important man. But these do not explain what the witnesses saw. You see, according to them, it is you who fired at and killed Senor DePaul. You bet I did. It's obvious this man, DePaul, was about to shoot Mr. Hunter. Just seconds before that, he was driving right at him with full intent to kill. And in self-defense, Mr. Hunter fired at the car to stop him. And you have never met Senor Hunter? Never. I just did what I thought I had to do. It's obvious DePaul was a madman, or a killer. Yes, I cannot make a decision on this matter. We will go to Secretary Diaz's office. Only he has the authority to dispose of this. If you will get into my car. Why you shot the paw? Brad had a gun in his hand. So did I, Anderson. It was aimed right at him. Help me out here, Brad. Excuse me, Jim. Jim, you want to get in the car? Hunter? Give the guy a break. He can't answer these questions, and you don't need to know. DePaul is a suspect in a murder in Los Angeles, Brad. I came down here to bring him back alive. You're in my life again, aren't you? OK, OK, whatever I tell you, you don't repeat to anybody. Yeah. DePaul defected from the Bulgarian secret police. He was recruited by a, a certain U.S. agency. He was trained to do special duties. A couple of years ago, he started doing freelance work. The agency found out about it. They offered him a choice. Either stick to the contract or be terminated. 
This is another one of those cases, isn't it? In my opinion, Anderson had ample reason to believe that you were in danger of being blown away. The guy had already tried to run you down. You owe me a suspect, Brad. Just got a report that DePaul's dead. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Brad Wilkes showed up. Oh, what is this? Another cloak and dagger special? It looks that way. We got Franklin? Yeah, yeah Charlie has him in the interrogation room, see. Now look, Mr. Franklin. You agreed to make a statement in this case. Now, are you going to make it or not? I'm glad to see the two of you. Mr. Franklin here uh, can't make up his mind whether he wants to help us or not. Maybe you got a couple of questions you can ask him. I got a couple for you, Mr. Franklin. Five days before Shannon Richards was murdered, she had a argument with you and Tony Rondino. You want to tell me what that was about? I'm not going to answer that. I believe your First Amendment gives me that right. The Fifth. The Fifth Amendment gives you that right, Mr. Franklin. Three days before Shannon Richards was murdered, a phone call from your office was made to London to a Philip DePaul. Want to explain that? No, I know nothing about that phone call or who Philip DePaul is. Book him for murder. Wait a minute. <sighs> Shannon. Richards agreed to make a film for us based on a script that required her to be nude or, or partially nude in seven key scenes. And that night, she told us that there was nothing about nudity in her contract and that she had decided not to do any nude or semi-nude scenes. What would have happened if she hadn't done the nudity? <laughs> We'd have been bankrupt. She couldn't get it through her head that without nudity, she was nothing. What happened after Shannon left your office? Tony Rondino started calling her a deadbeat. He started screaming that he knew how to handle deadbeats. Meaning what? He was going to kill her. He said it wouldn't be the first time that he killed someone. I tried to talk him out of it, but he kept on going on about our insurance policy for, for Shannon. He kept on saying that she deserved to get hit and that the 15 million would leave us with five or six million in the bank. But when it was found that Shannon was dead, Tony swore to me that he had nothing to do with it. Did Monty Golden know about Shannon's decision? Oh, yes. Yes, but uh, Tony uh, tried to buy him off, but Monty wanted too much, so oh, well, then he threatened to go to the police and... Tony killed him. And then DePaul killed Tony Rondino. Why? I don't know. Really, I do not know. Mr. Franklin, after Tony Rondino killed Monty Golden, didn't you think that maybe Tony had uh, gone over the edge a little bit? Yes, yes I did. And that's when you hired Philip DePaul to kill Tony, isn't that right? Of course I didn't. I don't kill people or have them killed. All I'm guilty of is not reporting that Tony killed Monty Golden. Do you have anything to add to this? No, that's all I know, so help me God. All right. Mr. Franklin, you can go. I can go? Just get up and leave? Private citizens are not required to report felonies. I think you hired DePaul to kill Tony Rondino. We haven't got the evidence yet to book you. But if you attempt to leave the country, or even the county, you'll be arrested and booked for murder. All right.
All right, you can go. Well, now we know the whys and wherefores, but we're going to have a hell of a time proving any of this. We don't have the answer yet, Charlie. What are you talking about? Charlie, DePaul was a pro. Oh, look, whoever killed Shannon Richards was an amateur. What reason would DePaul have to kill Tony Rondino? DePaul wanted to be paid by Rondino, regardless if he made the hit or not. Tony wouldn't pay him. DePaul murdered him. Sergeant Hunter. I'm uh, sorry to disturb you at this hour of the evening, but I need to talk to you. Where's Jesse? Jesse? Jesse Cruz. Why would he be here? Well, why not? You're married to him, aren't you? See, Diana, you married Jesse about the 7th of this month, eight days before your sister was murdered. All right. Jesse and I are married. Is there something wrong with that? No, not at all. But why keep it a secret? Jesse was afraid that it, his ex-wife might make trouble for him. He wanted to wait until things settled down. Which ex-wife was he concerned with, Diana? He's got three of them. I don't believe anything you're saying. Oh, well, you should. How long after you hired Jesse did he actually find your sister? I don't know, three weeks or so? Three weeks or so? Do you know how long it takes a good private investigator to find a movie star like Shannon? About 20 minutes. I want you to leave. Uh, Jesse smelled a good thing. You know he didn't have any parents, knew Shannon was single. And if anything ever happened to Shannon, you'd become a very wealthy woman. So he turned up the charm and married you. Shortly after that, he found Shannon. And then he killed her. Just make one move that I don't like, Sergeant, and you're dead. Now you take off that jacket real slow. Come on! OK, baby. Now you can get his gun with no problem. Just don't get too close to him. Diana, he murdered your Shut sister. Up! Shut up! Now come on, baby, do it. Come on, don't blow this thing for us now. Come on. Jesse, did you kill my sister? Come on, what's the matter with you? You remember what you said to me yesterday? You were the happiest, luckiest woman in the whole wide world. Do you remember that? You want to keep it that way? Do what I'm telling you. Trust me! I think we've heard enough, don't you? Jesse, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> Give me the gun, Jesse, very slowly, but first. Parker, have you? 
No, I haven't. I thought you said that uh, you talked him into staying around. Well, I did, but he said he'd only stick around until we found DePaul. And, uh... All right, to my congressman, the senator, the mayor, the chief of police. This country belongs to the common man. That's me. I knew the minute I laid eyes on you, I'd be sorry. Harry, where you been? Been looking for you. I've been hiding. That's where I've been. I heard you were looking for me. I have been all over the place. Good work, Parker. Why don't you identify this picture for me? Was this the guy you saw pulling the body out of the Jaguar in the park? Nah. Never saw him in my life. Oh, good. That's it. That's all? That's all. You know, Harry, you look like you could use a good meal. Why don't you, uh, join us for lunch, hmm? What do you say? I think I could fit that into my schedule. Mm. Parker? I assume you'll be sticking around. Well, under one condition, Sergeant. What's that? That you let me pick up the tab for lunch. What do you say, huh? We'll get a little Italian food? With a steak? With a steak? Mm -hmm. OK, with a steak is good. Some red wine. being paralyzed by press demands for information on this case. I have friends in Washington who are just as anxious to find DePaul as you are. Why is Washington interested in this guy? I think he never got what he wanted from her. And I think he killed her. Either stick to the contract or be terminated. Murder is my business. In part one of Naked Justice. Wonder. I can do it without you want. Oh. Yes, sir. Nice weekend. Thank you. See Monday? Mm-hmm. Here is a special news release. Famed film star Shannon Richard has been found dead in Elysian Park. Shannon Richard. The remainder of the money is due now. Wire to my account in London. So what's the call? Murder. Forced overdose. 
No, no, Philip DePaul went to the Jaguar at the airport the night that Shannon Richards was murdered. And we later found that car parked illegally on Oakmont Place in Beverly Hills. So from illegal parking to murder, that's a giant step. It's just a matter of time before the cops show up with a lot of questions. Yes, that's very true. Is that your blue Jaguar downstairs? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. Well, if I got to pick one, I'd say it's uh, that guy right there, uh, second from the end. No one comes to my house and threatens me, especially a cheap dime store. What is it? There are two police officers outside. They want to talk to you. Mr. Rondino, did you have any insurance on Shannon Richards? George, give her the figures. Mm. $15 million for the term of the shoot, and it's fairly standard. Do you know if Miss Richards had any family? Yes, she did. Oh, what are you doing here? I own this house. Or at least I will when my sister's will is probated. I need a secure line. You've had an inquiry on 3704? Yes. What was the nature of the inquiry? Information on Philip DePaul. Inquirer's name, if known. Sergeant Dee Dee McCall, Los Angeles Police. Through SI agent Bradley Wilkes, same city. Thank you for calling, Desert Flower. Viking will be in touch. And now, Naked Justice, part two. Roger, Air 6. Sewer King is in place. Roger, Sewer King. Primary is a block north, still southbound. Sewer King, this is TV man. We'll take the phone as soon as Humpty Dumpty's on the wall. Roger, TV man. Go ahead, Air 6. Sewer King's got an eyeball on him. You know, all that guy has done is drive to and from the studio for the last two days. Can't be on the level. Ron Dino's just laying low till the dust settles, that's all. OK, TV man, Humpty Dumpty's on the wall. Roger, good buddy. Put the pedal to the metal and aimed it at the barn. TV man and Captain America are on the scene. I think Parker's been watching too many Saturday morning cartoons. Sewer King, this is home base. Go ahead, home base. I got a message for you from Miss Meg Siebert. She'd like to meet you sometime this evening. She left a number. Thanks, Ambrose. Call her back. Get a uh, place and time to meet her, and I'll get there as soon as I can. I'll bet you will. I was Tony Rondino's secretary in the daytime and his whore at night. And, uh, he tells me, forget it. How long ago was that? Seven weeks. Seven weeks ago, and you're still working for the guy? Jobs aren't a dime a dozen. And I, I decided I'd just wait her out. Excuse me. Waitress, could I have a double vodka on the rocks, please? Yeah, wait who out? Shannon Richards, the minute she came on the scene, he started acting like a 16-year-old. He did everything but get acne. 
I think she never gave him what he wanted. And I think he killed her. And why do you think that? Five days before she was murdered, Shannon came into the office for a, a meeting with uh, Tony and George Franklin. It was about 7 o'clock. She'd just finished shooting. I hadn't even taken her makeup off yet. They went at it hot and heavy, Tony and Shannon, yelling at the top of their lungs. I, I couldn't tell what the argument was about. The walls to his office are really thick, but it went on for about an hour. Then Shannon stormed out and sailed past me without a word. Well, didn't you guess, Ron, do you know what the argument was about? No. Tony and George stayed in the office for about another hour. A couple of times, Tony yelled at George. Then they left together and told me I could go home. When Tony came in the next morning, I said to him, honeymoon's over, huh? He looked at me like he could kill me on the spot. And he said, if you ever open your mouth to anybody about last night's meeting, you're dead meat. You got that? Four days later, Shannon Richards is dead. And you think Tony killed Shannon? I know he did. He got drunk one night and told me how he once beat a man to death when he worked for one of the casinos in Vegas. Wait a minute here, Meg. Why would Tony want Shannon dead? Doesn't he stand to lose a lot of money? What's the matter with you guys? You're always willing to jump on the theory of the woman scorned. Well, what about the man scorned? Tony probably never had a problem with a woman in his whole life till he met Shannon Richards. You know what he said to me? He told me I was history. The flame is out. Can you believe that? I gave him six of the best years I'll probably ever give anybody. And he tells me the flame is out. Is there anybody else that you can think of that can corroborate the fact that Tony was in love with Shannon Richards? I mean, this is all very new to me. Why don't you try talking with the other poor slob who couldn't make it with Shannon? Well, who's that? Walter Ortiz. <laughs> Who is it this time? Who is it this time? Tell me who it is! That's it. Last time I saw her, the last few feet of film I shot of her. Will never be seen. Meg Siebert says you were in love with Shannon. I fall in love with all my leading ladies. Makes the job easier, a lot more fun and easier. Who killed her? How the hell would I know? I understand Tony Rondina was in love with Shannon as well. <laughs> Makes Siebert again, right? Rondino. Maybe he had the hots for Shannon. What the hell did she want with him? I'll tell you something. And this is on the best possible authority, Shannon Richards herself. Absolutely nothing happened between them. Nothing. And what about you? That's none of your damn business. I need to explain something to you. Murder is my business. Now, you want me to read you your rights? OK. OK. I was in love with her. I didn't kill her. Did you have a piece of this film? Yes, so. So what? You want to know what was in it for me? Is that what this is? Yeah. Is that what this is? Yeah. OK. 3%. 3% up to break even, 6% after that. And I'm talking gross, not profit. Was this going to be a successful film? Yeah, it was going to be. 50 million, 100 million. <laughs> the day Rondino signed Shannon, the picture was a guaranteed success. And what would prevent that? Her death. Hello? 
Hey, babe, it's me. I got some bad news. I won't be seeing you tonight. Why not? I just found out the cops are digging through every square inch of my life. What are they doing that for? They haven't found your sister's killer yet, and they're looking for somebody convenient to hang a murder rap on. But you haven't done anything. I know, but uh, the cops are getting desperate. Listen, until this thing blows over, I think we should play it cool. How long will that be? I don't know. I don't know. Let's play it one day at a time. Jesse, I miss seeing you. You think I don't feel the same way? I just don't want people to get the wrong idea about us, that's all. All right, Jesse. Whatever you think is best. Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Trust me. I love you. I'll see you soon. I love you, too. you would have picked a place that had a little bit more panache. Well, Dee Dee, my dad once told me, Brad, don't put your money in a bank that doesn't pay interest. Our special is meatloaf. You want to see a menu? Uh, two coffees. That's it? That's it. It ain't going to get better later, honey. Dump them. <laughs> well, you heard the lady, Brad. What? What does that mean? You don't want to see the pictures of...